from the News Channel 5 Network. This is KFASA Nashville. Bienvenidos and welcome to Kepasa Nashville. My name is Cristina Allen and thank you for joining us. Today my guest is Stephanie Titro, as I say that correctly? Yes. And you are the co-director of the Tennessee Immigrant Rights and Refugee Coalition, otherwise known as TURK. Close, the Tennessee Immigrant and Refugee Rights <sighs> Coalition. Okay, it's so a mouthful. Turk. It yeah. is a mouthful. Thank you very much for being thank on the show. Thank you for having me. Um, Stephanie, Tell me exactly what Turk is, and I have a lot of questions for you, because I know you're right in immigration and you're working with the refugees and, and the rights, but what exactly is Turk? Sure. So our organization is about 10 years old, and we are a statewide coalition made up of individual immigrant members as well as member organizations who also serve immigrants. And our main mission is to develop the leadership of new immigrant and refugee communities to fully participate in the civic process. And so we engage new immigrant communities in policy advocacy, in civic engagement to ensure that the policies that we have here in Tennessee make it so that everybody is able to fully participate and contribute when they move here. And when you say um, immigrants and refugees, refugees are coming with green cards, is that correct? That's correct. So they are legally here um, because they're either political asylum, religious persecution, they are here because we have asked them to come here and take care of them. Fairly funded some of your program? Is it? Um, so yeah, we work with immigrants and refugees no matter what their status is okay. or how they came to Tennessee. They're here now by themselves or with families, but they're here because they want to be part of Tennessee. And so refugees do come through a special process. It's a long-standing federal program um, that, yeah, for humanitarian reasons. When people can't stay in their country because of fear of persecution based on some part of their identity, then the United States as well as countries across the world welcome them here. And Tennessee is a place where people come but we do not directly resettle refugees or yes, receive federal yeah, funding for that. So in terms of once they get settled, Tennessee has grown dramatically in mm -hmm. our population of foreign-born um, citizens. One in seven, I believe, are foreign-born. But why Nashville? Why Tennessee? Yeah, so it's really exciting. Over the last decade, Tennessee has had the fastest growing immigrant population in the country. So statewide, the number of foreign-born folks here is still only about four and a half percent, but in Nashville, the number is okay. much more closely mirrors the national average at about 12 percent. Wow. Yeah. So, so they're coming to Nashville because we're great. I mean, why do they come choose Nashville? Because they come in through these big major cities like Chicago, New mm -hmm. York, but they choose Nashville. Yeah, so we are sort of a new gateway, a new destination place, and you know, Nashville and Tennessee are a place where a lot of people are choosing to move from all over the United States. And you know, like Mayor Dean always says, that it's such it's the greatest compliment for an immigrant family who could go anywhere in the country to choose here, and it's because of you know our cost of living and our economic opportunity and a really great place to raise their family. And I think people forget that <laughs> because we are a welcoming city and, and especially Wilmson County, Middle Tennessee. Mm -hmm. um, but you still have a lot of work to do as Turk. Mm -hmm. What exactly, I know you do a lot of um, policies and, and um, educating legislature of mm -hmm. the equality of our immigrants and refugees. Um, and I know you defeated a lot of bad bills. Sure. What exactly does that mean and what kind of bills are they? Yeah, and so, you know, we've for a long time been advocating for, at the federal level for our federal Congress to update and reform our immigration laws, which are incredibly outdated. And in the meantime, we've seen states work to legislate immigration and um, whether that's been in California with really sort of proactive policies that promote the integration of immigrant families or like Arizona that works to make it as impossible as they can for immigrants especially immigrants without status to make a home in Arizona and so our state legislature has been figuring out sort of which side of the spectrum they want to be on one that invests in immigrant communities and promotes their success or one that sort of marginalizes and makes it harder for folks to participate and so you know, five, six years ago, every single year, the legislature, or a handful of legislators, I should say, would introduce bills that would make it harder for um, immigrant families to get their kids into schools. But that's a federal law. 
So, but they can change it as a statewide law? Um, so this is specifically, I mean, they tried. This okay. one didn't pass. Okay, thank um, you. But <laughs> thank you, Turkey. Yeah. Yes. Because um, it's a federal mm -hmm. law that anyone foreign born, no matter your status, has a right to go to K through 12. Is that right? Right. Okay. And so they've also introduced laws that affect sort of higher education and access okay. to our public colleges and universities. Um, and so there would be 40, 50, 60 of these bills introduced every year. But we've seen a sharp decrease over the last couple of years. And we're very proud to say that in 2013 and 2014, no anti-immigrant bills passed the legislature. And in fact, we've seen such a shift that um, last year, a positive bill was introduced that really invested in immigrant communities. It was a bill that would grant in-state tuition to folks regardless of their status if they've been in Tennessee for a certain number of years and want to go to college. And we were so excited that you know it got the traction that it did it ultimately didn't pass but it had bipartisan support introduced by two republicans and we're and very chatt one's from chattanooga I both believe. were from chattanooga, chattanooga. Yeah. so here chattanooga mm -hmm. is introducing a bill that would give in-state tuition to those that have graduated five years i mean there's there's a criteria yes. because why did they invest in a bill like that as a republican why do they see that as an opportunity you know, I think that Senator Gardenhire, who was the Senate sponsor, has talked about the sort of undeniable benefits that our state yeah. gets when more folks are enrolled in college and receiving these degrees. And so over the last few years, Governor Haslam, with his Drive to 55 program, lots of um, conversations with different chambers, we've been talking about how we're not enrolling and graduating enough people from for higher for jobs higher education. and bringing uh, manufacturing yeah. or high-tech jobs to Tennessee. We have to have a, uh, an educated yeah. high school, um, an educated workforce. Absolutely. Okay. And so then we look at all of the things that we can do to increase those rates. So the free community college program of Governor Haslam is one, but also so reducing barriers for you know through having this arbitrary you've been here your whole life but you still have to pay out of state tuition so it's an effort to get rid of barriers to people going to college and I've had several people come on the show to speak about that and and kind of been able to give a, a, a measurable success by with an educated um, workforce mm -hmm. we're able to bring in larger headquarters or manufacturing or high-tech jobs which means higher salary mm -hmm. which everyone benefits in the state of Tennessee trickling down to the grocery store to the um, small, uh, you know, anything, because mm -hmm. we all, the more money, the more spending, the more economic that's growth. Right. So that's, that's right. I think that's kind of exciting in the sense that um, they saw the big picture of it. Right, and for us, it's, you know, it's definitely a win-win. We need more graduates. These businesses need more educated folks in Tennessee, and we believe that every student has a right to an education, and people shouldn't be treated differently based on where they were Do born. Do you find that with the, I mean, it's fairly new, the immigrant community here, let's say 20 Twenty plus years. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean less than that. But and they are their children are getting their, are going to college. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know several people came as refugees at fourteen and now are getting their masters mm -hmm. and are becoming very well integrated in the community mm -hmm. um, and make a difference. So Absolutely. do you see that? I mean, the generation, first generation, of course, is not, but second, third generations taking advantage of all this. Yeah, absolutely. I think Nashville is seeing the same trends that more traditional gateway cities have seen for a long time, which is sort of increased integration and folks are able to succeed and and even first generation folks although it may not be going to college in those traditional ways we know that immigrants are incredibly entrepreneurial and well, are starting businesses at such high rates and here. Forbes magazine in 2011 I know that's a few years ago ranked Nashville third in the nation in entrepreneurs between Hispanics and Asians mm -hmm. I mean we don't see a lot of Asians but they're here but an entrepreneur starting their own business and we know that is the entrepreneur spirit especially in middle Tennessee and Nashville how great it is mm -hmm. no matter where you're from absolutely so, um, let's talk a little bit a little bit more about the immigration reform sure. um, and how the, the big words right now I mean the topic is the children coming from Central America mm -hmm. not necessarily Mexico but Honduras El Salvador um, and all these places coming to the borders take me is pretty much and they're children what does that mean for Tennessee? Because recently Governor Haslam wrote a, um, uh, a letter to uh, Obama. Why mm -hmm. are we getting all these children? But I think we've been getting them. I wasn't sure about that. How is it, yeah. What does that mean? Yeah, so there's been a lot of sort of misinformation or a lack of information out about what is really a regional crisis. And so you're right. Unaccompanied children, children who are under the age of 18, who are migrating alone, uh, especially from Central America, that 
that isn't new, unfortunately. There has been an incredible spike and an incredible kind of surge over the last few years. Um, but it's it's not just the United States. In Costa Rica and Belize and Panama and Mexico, so going all over. they've also seen a 712 percent increase in the number of unaccompanied children over the last five years. And so, you know, it has nothing to do with our immigration policy and nothing to do with our immigration reform or lack thereof. This is a, a regional crisis. This is a humanitarian crisis that we really need a holistic response to. So, you know, I never really realized they were going to other mm -hmm. countries. I mean, I follow the news and you're right. I was thinking they're all just coming here, mm -hmm. that we don't have immigration reform, people don't know, send your children, we'll get in. Mm -hmm. And that's what everyone says and that's what uh, probably, right. it's been rhetoric of that. How does that affect um, Tennessee? Because we did get a, a slew of kids that were able to have a connection here, a family member that they were able mm -hmm. to send from mm -hmm. the border cities to Tennessee. Mm -hmm. But has that always been done? Yeah, so unfortunately, sort of immigration and immigration reform and a conversation about, you know, how our country can do best what we've always done, which is welcome people from other countries and grow from, you know, immigration has become so politicized and so loaded that it's been really hard for people to see this crisis for what it is, which is incredibly young children um, fleeing incredible violence, going through a traumatic journey by themselves all the way to the United States border. Um, they are turning themselves in at the border and asking for safe refuge and there's a process, like you said, for them to do that that has been done before. And in the case of Tennessee, the the numbers a few weeks ago, and we anticipate they will go up, was 760 unaccompanied children have come to Tennessee. Uh, again, this isn't new. Last year, it was 400. Just the numbers have increased. The numbers have increased, but everybody who is here, again, children fleeing violence, are here because they have a family member or a close personal relation um, who they can be reunited with. And so that is something we should all be grateful for. Well, we're going to take a quick break, Stephanie. We're going to come back and continue to talk to Stephanie Titro, who's the um, co-director of Turk, Tennessee Immigrant and Refugee Rights Coalition, Turk, and um, continue our conversation. We'll be right back.